Executive Director of the International Energy Agency, Faith Birrell, joining us uh, now. And um, can you just help us understand why you arrived at this headline announcement? Dire warning. Uh, thanks. Uh, now, uh, last year, global economy saw a big drop as a result of COVID. And uh, as everybody, uh, we were hoping to see global economy rebounds uh, and the economic activity starts to take place across the world. The question was whether or not this economic rebound is going to bring uh, emissions upwards or downwards. As you just said, many governments, such as the US government, UK government, uh, uh, Europeans, uh, China, Japan said, climate change is serious and we are having serious climate targets. Now, when we look at the numbers, as we always do at the International Energy Agency, there is a widening gap between those pledges, government statements, and what is happening in the real life. What we see is this year, global emissions will increase substantially, mainly driven by coal use in electricity generation. And as a result, we see the second highest increase in global emissions in the history. And there are more coal power plants set to join the world's grid, as it were. Look, your report rightly shows that economic bounty and pollution are frankly twinned at the hip. Your organisation still sees that. It, it, you know, you've put economic recovery right next to higher demand for oil, which was always going to happen. We know this has to stop at some point. How do you propose that that decoupling so first of all, is made? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, what we see is that it is in the first three months of this uh, year, which is the data, it's not an expectation, it's not a projection, which is the data. What happened in the first three months? Huge increase of uh, coal, gas and uh, oil. Uh, this is very uh, clear. And we expect, in the absence of uh, concrete, immediate actions from the governments, this trend will continue this year, and I am afraid, uh, uh, next year as well. Therefore, the targets set by the governments to reach net zero emissions, to avoid the catastrophic climate change, will be much, much more difficult uh, to reach. So therefore, governments, need to come not only with these targets, what happens in 2050, 2030, but immediate, credible actions in energy policies. How are they going to change the energy policies in order to reduce the emissions, in order to reduce the use of coal and the others? And how are they going to finance those measures in the energy sector? We need credible that, declarations, yeah. announcements from uh, governments what kind of energy policies they are going to put in place and how those policies will be financed. So we are um, promised that sort of information from the meeting that Joe Biden is holding at the White House this week in anticipation of what is uh, COP26 in Glasgow towards the end of the year. While Joe Biden is hosting global leaders, either virtually or in person, uh, at that summit in a few days' time. Um, apparently, we should expect to see some new targets by the US. Uh, the US, of course, is the world's second largest emitter of greenhouse gases. What do you think the appropriate level of reduction for the US would be? And what will not be enough? So, uh, first of all, uh, I commend President Biden for organizing this uh, meeting, bring the world leaders uh, together to address one of the most important questions of the day within his uh, 100 days of being in the office, number one. Number two, what I would expect from the leaders, including the United States, not only setting targets, and I hope they will be ambitious targets, but to tell us, to tell the world 
how they are going to reach those targets. What are the legs to these, those targets? I will be also uh, joining to the uh, leaders' summit, and I will uh, invite all the uh, world leaders to come up with the credible energy policies uh, to reach those targets. When it comes to United States, I expect that the United States will come up with the ambitious uh, reduction of the, uh, their emissions. But as important as that, if not more important, how the United States government believes they are going to reach those targets, what kind of energy policies? More wind, more okay, solar, more that. electric cars, that. more hydrogen, I need them. Yeah. No, and you make a very good point. It's like, you know, commitments are all well and good, but how are you going to actually um, honour those commitments is what's really important. I just wonder what you believe is ambitious. Look, we learned earlier today that the British Prime Minister will announce a new pledge to reduce emissions by 70% or 78%, in fact, of greenhouse gases by 2035 when compared to 1990 levels. So is that realistic? Is that ambitious enough? And if so, should others follow suit to the tune of a 78% reduction in greenhouse gases by 2035? I think it is up to the U.S. president to announce the U.S. Uh, ambitious and uh, uh, goals there. But I expect a serious radical uh, uh, reduction in the emissions, and I am sure it will come true. Uh, once again, uh, those radical emissions are good, but what is better is to know how much money will be put in the right energy policies to reach those uh, emissions. I read in the papers that the U.S. may be coming with a, about 50 percent or so uh, emission reductions. If it is the case or around those numbers, I, think it, I would uh, welcome uh, that move. renewables fit into all of this, sir? I mean, we, 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 we saw a significant amount of, a, a very significant amount of what is new capacity added to uh, the world energy system in 2020 was renewables. I spoke uh, recently to the, uh, the DG of the International Renewable Energy Agency, which is based here at Mazda in Abu Dhabi. Um, he recently released a, a, a report uh, that said that clean energy investments need to increase by 30% to a total of $131 trillion for climate goals to be achieved by 2050. <laughs> uh, with numbers like that, are we just so, let me, stretching beyond let, our let means me at this point? Very, are, are we living simple, in, uh, in, in cloud cuckoo land? Yeah, let me make it very simple. The, I gave you a couple of uh, uh, pessimistic numbers or a bleak uh, picture, but one optimistic note in the whole climate change debate. Renewables are getting cheaper. Solar, wind, they are getting cheaper. The uh, governments, companies, citizens uh, will use renewables not only to save the world, save the planet, because just because they are cheaper. This is very good news. And in our report came today, we say that the renewables are breaking records one after the other. But the question is, the issue is, renewables growth alone, it is not enough to change the major trends. Renewables we use for electricity generation, we need beyond that, the steel mills, the, the, uh, the coal power plants, uh, transportation sector, we need to clean them up finding alternatives uh, to those options. Electric cars, carbon capture and uh, storage, and other hydrogen, we need new clean energy technologies. And what I'm expecting from the Biden summit uh, this uh, Thursday and Friday, many governments will come up with serious clean energy technology right. ambitions, not only to address the climate change, but to prepare their economies for the future. Got it. So with that, we're going to leave it there. We thank you very much indeed for joining us. An important summit at the White House this Thursday, Friday. Thank you for setting it up for us.